another day another google camera versus stock camera video on technology jog was that too creepy just wanted to try something new all right here after i won't so guys the one plus seven pro has been praised by reviewers all over the world but one thing that some people feel one plus hasn't nailed yet is the camera well google camera has always come to the rescue and this time it's no different before we go ahead and compare them, let me introduce myself. My name is Ashwin Sundar. This is Technology Jock. Camera comparisons take a lot of production time, so please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to appreciate the efforts. Now, before we proceed, yes, we are giving away a OnePlus 7 Pro to one lucky winner. This giveaway is sponsored by Capes India. Capes India has a lot of cool skins available for all the latest phones including the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Realme 3 Pro. So here's what you need to do to enter the contest. Number one, subscribe to Technology Jog and hit the bell icon. Number two, click the giveaway link in the description. You'll arrive at this page. Follow the three steps given here. Basically, order a skin from Capes. Take a photo of it and post it on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter and tag Capes India and use the hashtag OnePlus 7 Pro giveaway. That's it. The winner will be announced on June 7 on Capes India's Instagram through a live stream. Uh, I'll also post the announcement on my YouTube community tab and other social media. Now, before we start the comparison, let me show you how to install Gcam on your OnePlus 7 Pro. Because it's not a simple one step process, there are so many settings that need to be changed. But don't worry, I've changed everything and I've saved all those settings to a file. So first click the link in the description. You can find that file and the Google camera app. Download them. First install Gcam and then go to your file manager. Copy that technology jog file and paste it in Gcam folder in the internal storage. Now open Google camera, double tap near the shutter button and hit restore. That's it. As usual, let's first compare pictures shot in daytime. The very first thing we notice is weird. The stock camera images don't represent the sky very well. The blue color is not retained. Now the reason for this is, the stock camera tends to brighten the images a bit too much. Uh, when brightness is increased, the colors in the image start fading away. They become pale. Let me actually show you. This is a Google camera image. The colors are perfect, exactly what I saw in real life. Now, as I increase the brightness, look at the colors. The color of the sky is gone. The color of the high rise building has changed. Uh, even the colors of the leaves and the slide at the bottom have changed. So this is exactly what OnePlus' stock camera tends to do in many situations. Same happens here. On the Google camera image, you can see a lot more detail. The texture of those petals look crisp. Same here. Now here it was a little windy, the flower was moving and the Google camera got the better shot. The stock camera image is a little blurry. When it comes to dynamic range though, the stock camera is better. The region near the sun is completely overexposed on the Google camera image. On the stock camera image, it's a little better. Same here, both highlights and shadows have more details on the stock camera image. Guys, in case you find it hard to understand these camera terms like highlights, shadows, exposure, dynamic range, etc., then please go here and watch that video. I've explained everything in very simple terms. You will definitely understand everything for sure. I came across a couple of issues in the stock camera app. Uh, number one, I could see some sort of filter look at times. It completely ruins the image. This happened like two or three times in the past couple of days. And number two, it takes a lot of time to focus on macro subjects. As in when the subject is close to the camera, you need to tap to focus four or five times to get it right. When it comes to selfies, once again, the stock camera images look better. Uh, the Google camera selfies look over sharpened. Now, I completely agree that I don't have a very smooth skin, but Gcam makes it look even worse. Uh, I'm not saying the stock camera selfies are perfect. Uh, they are a little soft and the dynamic range is also not as good as it is on the Google camera images. But overall, the stock camera selfies look a little more pleasing to the eye. Now, all of those things apply to selfie portraits as well. 
and the stock camera also performs better in terms of edge detection. Like near the edges, you can see the blur is messed up on Google camera portraits. It happens rarely though. Moreover, the background blur is stronger on Google camera portraits. It gives that nice look. It makes the subject stand out. Now here are some rear camera portraits. The major difference is the stock camera uses the 3x zoom camera, the telephoto camera for portrait mode while the Google camera uses the primary 48 megapixel camera. Now forget the colors, it depends on the saturation values in Gcam settings, we can change them to our taste. But look at Sai here, he looks the same in both images. And now look at the background, it's a lot bigger on the stock camera portrait, it looks very zoomed in, uh, so you can see less of the background and more of the subject. That's why zoom cameras are always better for portraits. The subject just stands out beautifully. There are two cons though. Since it's 3x zoom, you cannot stand close to the subject. You need to move away. Uh, and number two, the 3x zoom camera is not as good as the primary camera. So under low light, the performance is not great. But I still prefer the stock camera portraits because it looks so much better. Even in terms of sharpness, it's better. And the edge detection is also excellent. Look here. Here, and even here, such a complex region to detect and blur out, but the stock camera still does it. Now when it comes to low light, the stock camera tends to smudge up the details. The difference is clearly noticeable here. And the color reproduction is also not the best. The colors look a little faded. Google camera is the winner. But when it's extremely dark out there, the stock camera makes use of Nightscape 2.0 while the Google camera uses night sight and the nightscape mode captures a lot more details. As in, it's a lot brighter. Okay, it's actually not as simple as that because in certain situations, uh, like when there is some light in the scene, the Google camera images have more details. Uh, as in the texture of everything looks better and natural. Guys, this is quite complicated. Uh, Nightscape 2.0 is better at certain things and night Night Sight is better at certain things. Uh, I'll come up with a dedicated video, Nightscape 2.0 versus Night Sight. I'll explain everything in detail in that video. For now, let me tell you, in most instances under low light, Google camera performs better. It's more reliable. Uh, even selfies look better and brighter. When it comes to video recording, there's not a lot of difference in the actual picture quality, but in terms of frame rate, Google camera is way behind. The stock camera supports 4K 60fps and 480fps slow motion while Google camera maxes out at 4K 30fps and slow motion is very finicky, it doesn't work most of the time, uh, for now at least. Developers will come up with better Google camera versions for the OnePlus 7 Pro and those versions might have more features like access to the telephoto camera and the ultra wide angle camera and so on. For now, this is what we have and it performs really well in both day and night. For selfies and portraits though, I prefer the stock camera. What about you? What do you prefer for portraits, selfies and regular images? Let me know in the comment section. Please hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to show your support. Thank you so much for watching. This is Ashwin Sundar and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.